again on the radio, and it happened again. And I'm going, God, you know, uh, what's going on? So we, we call Shane, and everything's normal, you know, routine and everything. So you you think um, I'm alarmist, I was in the flesh. And, no, 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 no. The Holy Spirit is totally different, totally different, and faith. Because for over, I want to say, seven, eight, nine months, I forget. But every time the song would play, I would hear it, and I could remember Shane. And it was the same heart piercing uh, cry to the Lord, don't you know what he's my son? We got a call several months later, uh, just a few years ago, uh, Shane got hit by a truck and got thrown across the pilot like a sack of potatoes. Of course, we went to Florida right away. And then later on found out that Shane had died on that road. But it was revived in the helicopter ambulance. He died again in the helicopter ambulance and was revived. Finally made it to the hospital. And he died again. But it was revived. And of course you think, how could you how could you pray? But only the Holy Spirit could do that. I was praying for Shane, not not just for his soul, but for his life. And then so, and that's the Holy Spirit. You need to we need all we all need to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is faithful; will never never let you down. Uh, we just need to be sensitive. We need to be real sensitive and, and listen, pay attention. Um, that's my part. Well, over the last, well, the, the week before Tessa's bat mitzvah, I heard that song again on the radio, and it always makes me think of shame, you know, and I was praying for him, and I was praying the words along with the words of the song, and at one point, the man saying, don't you know, he's my son, and I just said to the Lord, he's my firstborn son. And the moment I said it, the Lord spoke to my heart and said, redeem your firstborn son. And it had not been that many weeks since we had that in the partial about redeeming the firstborn son. And, you know, it just grabbed me. I just knew that's what the Lord was telling me. So um, I talked to Michael about it. He told me when we could schedule this, and in the three weeks since then, I have heard that song so many times on the radio, and, you know, just really been intensely praying for Shane, and found out several weeks ago, well, shortly after I heard that song, was that evening? I heard that morning, song that morning, that morning, that morning the Lord said, redeem the firstborn, and to confirm it, the that first night, my daughter called, she lives in Georgia. And she said Shane was on a bus to her house to live with him because he said he was leaving everything behind and wanted to start over. And he'd been telling me he knew he was on the wrong path and needed a new start. And, you know, I can just see the Lord bringing it all together. And, you know, not only that song, I kept, I've kept hearing a song about tonight I'm down on my knees praying for you and, you know, all the words fit. And I've been, yesterday morning, I was listening to the radio while I was getting ready for work and I was enjoying this praise song that I didn't know, but the man was singing about how he was singing hallelujah to the Lord and singing praise Jesus, praise Jesus, praise Jesus, because the Lord had brought him from a low place and set him on the right path. And all of a sudden I began to realize this is what is going to happen to Shane. And I remembered then they said the group that was singing it was Shane and Shane. It just blew me away. And then when I left work and was halfway home, the song, Don't You Know He's My Son, was on the radio. As I pulled in the driveway. And I know the Lord is, is 
about to cause this to happen. And the reason, the reasons that we wanted to do the Pidyon Haben ceremony was not only to obey the Lord's voice, but I feel like this ceremony is a declaration to the kingdom of God as well as to the kingdom of darkness that shame is claimed for the kingdom of light and that he will come into the kingdom of light. And not only that he's claimed, but that there is nothing now that can stand in the way, you know, not my disobedience or anything. <coughs> I've searched through the years to make sure everything's right in that way and been asking the Lord to tear down all walls he might have in his own heart and all walls the enemy might have put around him to tear down those walls so that there's a clear path to the Lord. And I believe that's going to happen. So, um, We, uh, we decided to uh, to have Shane's picture as proxy. And you folks have to realize that this is a, uh, they don't call, they don't use the word supernatural for nothing. <laughs> so this is supernatural. It's it's, uh, it's the Royal Kakodesh, the Holy Spirit's uh, faithfulness towards God's obedience. And uh, Yeshua didn't do the sacrifice for nothing. So, in the spirit, we're just going to stand our ground and go forward. Well, just to give a little explanation and background to what we're about to do in the Torah, uh, originally, as, as Yahweh brought the people of Israel out of Egypt, the firstborn uh, played the role of the priests for the people of Israel. And it wasn't until later that the Lord called out the tribe of Levi to take that role. Um, and so originally the Lord had told them every firstborn son that comes out of your womb is dedicated to me, to, to my service. And uh, then uh, this later, when the Lord said He was going to take the tribe of Levi instead, there was a count that was made, um, person for person, firstborn son for each of the Levites. And uh, we talked about this several weeks ago. There was uh, 273 uh, person difference. But the Lord instructed at that time, um, what I'm going to require of you is that you still uh, redeem your firstborn. Your firstborn still belongs to me, even though I'm going to uh, make use of the Leviim in place of them to administer in the tabernacle or the temple. They nevertheless still belong to me. And... Uh, I'm going to require you to redeem them uh, unless you want to actually they had the option to give their firstborn uh, over to the priests and the Levites to serve in the tabernacle and temple um, but most obviously most people ended up redeeming their firstborn instead and so the Lord set a value of five shekels for a firstborn son and a, uh, in today's, I don't know the current market right now, but at the time that we uh, purchased our Pidyon Habain coins, which are, there's, we have five one shekel solid silver coins that are, were minted specifically for the Pidyon Habain ceremony. They are Pidyon Habain coins, each one of them weighing one shekel, of silver, and at the time that we purchased them, uh, they were worth about ten dollars each. So the way that this works now is, since we don't deal in our economy with gold and silver anymore, um, the parents who want to redeem 
pay the equivalent amount to the synagogue, and the coins remain the possession of the synagogue and are just used in, in a ceremonial practice. And so right now, they have possession of those coins. And during this ceremony, they're going to turn those coins over to me in the act of, of claiming redemption for the firstborn. And so um, I just wanted to let you know, so you would know as we're going through this, what you're seeing uh, transpire. And if, if you, each one of these coins is a proof, which means that it's, uh, it's encased in vinyl, and um, rather than being outward, we can't actually handle them. And so you won't hear the clink clink when you, when you say, yeah, yeah, hand, hand them to us. But I wanted to leave them out where you could actually, uh, you know, afterwards you can come take a look at the coins and see what they actually look like. So. As uh, Luis said, since um, since we're not dealing with a child, a little baby, and since um, he's not actually physically able to be present with us, they brought this picture, and so um, we're going to use this picture to represent shame. Born son of his mother, and God has directed us to redeem him as it is written in the Torah. When Adonai brings you into the land of Cana, this is out of uh, Exodus 12, or 13, Exodus 13, verse 11. Um, as he swore to you and your ancestors, and gives it to you, you are to set apart for Adonai everything that is firstborn of the world. Every firstborn male animal will be will belong to Adonai. Every firstborn from a donkey you are to redeem with a lamb. But if you choose not to redeem it, you must break its neck. From the people, you are to redeem every firstborn son. The, uh, when at some future time your son asks you, your son asks, what is this? Then you can say, with a strong hand, Adonai brought us out of Egypt, out of the uh, abode of slavery. When Pharaoh was unwilling to let us go, Adonai killed all the firstborn males in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of humans and the firstborn of animals. This is why I sacrifice to Adonai any, any male that is first from the womb of an animal, but all the firstborn of my son is Ivy. Which do you prefer? To give me your son or to redeem? I wish to redeem them with the equivalents of five shekels and thus fulfill the obligations to the Torah.
first our uh, rule of all living things which they offer to our life, whether human or animal, will be yours. However, the firstborn of the human being that must be redeemed, and the firstborn of an unclean beast are to be The sum to be paid for redeeming any, anyone, anyone, old or poor, is to be five shekels of silver as you value it, using the sanctuary shekel. I accept the five shekels and hereby declare your son redeemed. May he be granted a full and blessed life, living in devotion to our God. May this redemption ceremony remind us all of our need for the spiritual redemption found in the Messiah Yeshua, as it is written in the Brit Kadashah. as Father, the one who judges impartially according to each person's actions, you should live out your temporary stay on earth in fear. You should be aware that the ransom paid to free you from the worthless way of life which your fathers passed on to you did not consist of anything perishable like silver or gold. On the contrary, it was the costly, bloody, sacrificial death of the Messiah as, a, as of a lamb without defect or spot. God knew him before the founding of the universe, but revealed him in Akarit Hayamin in the last days for your sakes. Through him you trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your trust and hope are in God. Yesimcha Elohim Kefraim Achimanase. May God make you like Ephraim and Manashe. Oh, 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Salvation, the Prince of Peace. Amen. <laughs> 